Okay, welcome back. All right, so let's clarify some basic understandings of, again, how Dreamweaver thinks and what Dreamweaver does. Again, Dreamweaver writes code. That's what it does. That's all it does. It writes code that the browsers can render. Unlike, again, Illustrator or Photoshop, those are self-contained programs. Dreamweaver is not self-contained. You're not going to give your, your you're not going to publish a Dreamweaver document to your client. Dreamweaver creates HTML code that the browser renders. If you give this document to your client and try to get it on the web, it's not going to happen because you have to physically publish it to the server, and the browser renders this code that I shared with you earlier. Okay, let me explain to you the concept of tagging your content. Now, before we get into that concept, let's understand what content is in relation to a website. Well, content could be a variety of different things. It's what the, it's what the page contains. It's content, hence the word content, contains. Okay? So a web page can contain text, as you're looking at right now. A web page can contain images, graphics, photos. A web page could contain... Uh, uh, duh, just to, to my blue brain chip there for a second a website can contain um uh, quick time movies uh sound files audio files aiff files flash files etc etc so those are content those are content items now since the program is not typically smart enough to know the type of content that you want it's your job as the intelligent being to tag your content now to addendum that statement when you do insert a graphic image or a quick time movie or a flash file dreamweaver does tag it correctly basically in general you want to basically understand how to tag your content text specifically so as an example this content on the page has all been tagged with a paragraph well that's fine and dandy but i don't always want paragraphs perhaps i want headers or perhaps i want to make something bold or i want to italicize something or maybe I want to indent something. That would do more with CSS, cascading style sheets, which of course is part of this free, did I say the word free before? Free video course. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to tag our content slightly differently. Right now, the information is tagged with a paragraph. Everything on this page is part of a paragraph, an opening paragraph tag and a closing paragraph tag, as I explained to you in a previous video. So in addition to tagging it as a paragraph, of course, I can tag it to make it bold or italic or what's called header tags, H1 through H6. H1, of course, is the largest header. H6 is the smallest header. Headers are great for search engine optimization and search engine uh, setups. So what I want to share with you is just like a WordPress program or a WordPress, just like a word processing program. Down here on the bottom, you have properties. Here's your property palette. Incidentally, if this property palette was missing for some reason, any palette is under the window menu, window properties. Now it's there, now it's not. Now it comes back, et cetera, et cetera. So anytime you have a palette that you can't see, it's under the window menu, window CSS styles, as an example. And pretty much all Adobe products put their palettes under the window menu. All right, now I'm going to share with you some really cool stuff techniques here. So based on these choices, everything right here is set up as a paragraph. So if I want to turn this paragraph into a header tag, I get So H1 through H6 again is similar to like a header and then a subhead and a subhead and a subhead, just like doing a magazine layout or a you know, word processing program. So it's not necessary to do this. All I have to do is put my cursor inside of that particular paragraph. Then I can come down here and just click H1 and that might see H1 tag it tag the content with h1 i'm going to undo that command z undo macintosh control z for windows now a shortcut to the, for that very simply h1 through h6 is simply command one through command six so if you do command one through command six it will change your different headers how cool is that windows control one through control six so command one makes this header one now, how do I know it's header one? Because it says so right there. That's my roadmap. This is my, my Bible. This is going to help me every step of the way when defining tags to create rules. So if I go to my code right now, you will see that that has been tagged with an opening H1 tag and a closing H1 tag right there. Now, again, back in the day before programs like this, front page and page mail, we had to do this for ourselves. We had to tag it from here, opening and tag it closing. Now you can, don't ask me why you'd want to, but you can actually do the code right from here as well. So the code affects the design and the design affects the code. They basically talk to each other. 
pretty cool. I'm going to put this, click this paragraph right here and hit command two, which is header two. I'm going to click this paragraph right here. And again, I'm not selecting the paragraph. I'm just making sure my cursor is right there and hitting command two. So right now I have an H1 tag. How do I know that? Because it says so right there. I have an H2 tag. How do I know that? Because it says so right there. An H3 tag. How do I know that? How do I know that? Because <laughs> it says so. Oh, did I make it an H3? Okay, my mistake. Command three makes it an H3. There you go. Okay, so that's how I tag my contents. Very important step. You're going to tag your contents. Now, something you may want to take a note on right now, and if you're watching this on Udemy, you can go to the top right-hand corner and basically write yourself a little note. This way you don't have to get a pen and paper. Unfortunately, on YouTube, you got to get out a pen and paper. So what I want to share with you is that when you tag your content, okay, you're basically telling the browser how to interpret that particular content. Now, the thing I want you to take a note on is this. Browser's default and Dreamweaver's default size is Times Roman, which is a serif typeface, has little hooks on it. Times Roman, 16 pixels. 16 pixels. So as an example, there's 72 pixels in an inch. So unless you slept through fourth grade math class, half of that would be 36 and half of that would be 18. So 16 pixels is sort of close to a quarter inch, and it basically measures from the ascender. So I'm just going to put a guide right here to right there. So it basically measures from here to there. Okay. Now this is the this is saying it's 18 because I probably just need to scoot that up a bit, but that's where it gets its height from. Incidentally, what I just did there, I'm going to undo that for a second. I'm just going to drag this back. A little production technique I'll share with you. If you don't have your rulers up here, you want to bring up your rulers by going to Command Option R for rulers, Windows Control Alt R. Rulers are a good way to basically do your layout for your design. Now, once you have your rulers up there, you can drag out a little guide. So let's say I want to figure out the distance between this part right here for whatever reason. Maybe I want to put a graphic in there. And I'm just going to put a guide between point A and point B. Now, here's a really cool trick, and I go into more detail on this when building the actual website in the subsequent videos, which you will find absolutely free on udemy.com by clicking the link in the description. If I hold down the command key, it will tell me what the width of this is. Okay, it basically is going to tell me the distance between any two guides in the end of the document. So between here and here, it's 169. Between here and here, it's 215. Now, that's really not important right now, but I just want to share with you that you can basically use guides and let Dreamweaver tell you the distance between those guides, which is really important when you're getting pixel perfect for your web design and layout, especially for smaller devices like tablets and smartphones, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now in addition to tagging our content with the H1, the H2, and the H3 tag, of course we can tag our content to make it bold or make it italic, and there's a very simple way to do this. I double click the word. And why am I double clicking? Because it beats the heck out of clicking and dragging. I can actually get more or less of what I'm looking for. If I double click, I get the entire word. Then based on these choices, we're going to make this bold. And what's the name of the tag? It's the strong tag. How do I know that? Because it says so right there in the bottom left hand corner. The strong tag is part of the paragraph tag, which is part of the body tag. The hip bone connected to the thigh bone connected to the shin bone, that kind of thing. So I'm going to double click this word here and make that bold. I'm going to double click this word and make that bold. Now by default, H1, H2 header tags are bold, but I'm going to share with you later on how this whole thing works. I'm going to double click this and make that bold. I'm going to double click this and make this bold. Now in addition to making things bold, of course, I can double click and make them italic by clicking right here, just like a word processing program. That creates the emphasis tag. EM is the name of the tag. Double clicking and making it emphasized. Double clicking and making it emphasized. Double clicking and making something emphasized. Double clicking and making something emphasized. Okay. Now, by tags, by tags I mean HTML4, HTML5 tags. These are predefined tags that the browsers have been programmed to understand. Okay. These are not made up words. These are actual defined tags. So as an example, notice that this tag here is called EM, not M's. And again, if I make this strong, it's called strong, not strongs. It's body, not bodies. It's P for paragraph, et cetera, et cetera. So those are predefined, absolutely carved in stone words. If you misspell the tag name, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. 
the browser doesn't understand misspelled words. Okay. Now, as we'll, learn in sub as we'll learn in subsequent videos, that we can actually come up with different types of rules, known as custom rules, known, known as class and course and, and tag IDs. We can ID a tag, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the basic bread and butter of how, first of all, we created a brand new page from scratch. First, before we did that, we defined our site through site, new site. We told Dreamweaver where we're going to keep the site. So when we up FTP it up to our server, everything will work perfectly. We created a new page, we put content on the page, we tagged our content, and in the next video, I'm gonna share with you my simple technique for creating CSS. Now again, the first couple of videos here that you're seeing on YouTube are more of an overview of the course that you're gonna get for free. So if you think I went a little fast or something, or some of you say, well, I think you went rather slow, um, you're going to get the full, complete course on Udemy.com for free. So in our next video, I will share with you my techniques, which are simple, simple techniques, no hand coding for doing CSS rules for HTML tags. Again, my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you for being here. My whole battle cry of learning software is three words. Think, learn, earn. Think, learn, earn. I want you to think so you can learn properly, so you can earn more money, and I mean a lot of money. So I'll talk to you in the next video, which will go into CSS, which of course stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Stay tuned.